Pat, 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 pat. It's pat on brands. Watch how you brand it, man. A pat on the back is a pat from the man. Better be branded, man. A pat on the pat is a pat on the brand. Welcome to yet another episode of the Pat on Brands Dialogue. We will officially start it. And as always, to bring out the big guns in the industry, you know, to come and inspire us and to, to teach us a thing or two, you know, because, you know, us youngsters, we always came to know so much because of the internet and stuff like that. You can always run a Google search here and there and you like, you know, everything. But this is pretty in the Yeah, man. Yeah. So, Buzan, I any humble before tea now, which is a line, you know, in, in, in the industry. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for taking time to, to join us. Um, I really no appreciate problem, it. No problem, man. Um, uh, I've been following you on, on Twitter. I'm still waiting for a feature on Mark Lives, Young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, man. It's become very popular. I mean, people stop me on the street. Uh, they stop yeah. me in the mall and they're like, hey, why aren't you, why, why aren't we on them? And what's happening? Hey, I think get out of see peace bomb. No, good, man. Good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. So for those that Thank do not you, know uh, who Veilin Gubane is, um, I don't know where you've been. Uh, this guy, if you're in the advertising industry, you know, you would obviously know his work through Avatar. You know, he's been in the game for quite some time. I'm not going to tell his story or read out his bio because the whole point of the Pattern Brands Dialogues is for the storyteller to tell his own story. So I'm going to give you about five to ten minutes for you to tell us where it all started, where you come from, and how did you get where you are today? All right, all right. I think um, maybe where I'm from, I'm from a place called Emanguze, that is uh, uh, northern Natal. That's yeah. where I was born, that's where my family is, that's where my mom lives. Um, mm -hmm. Went to school uh, in Empangeni, primary school, went to Durban, really an observer of society. You know, I went from a rural area to a township, um, to a Model C school, to UCT. So all these okay. times I've been going, I've been really interested in, in, in society and I've been really interested in business. You know, I started my first business at a very young age. So um, for as long as I can remember, I've been an entrepreneur. Um, at UCT as well, started throwing events, having a map party. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's how it always that's starts. Where, if you went to Boston, yeah, and that's, events is an easy <laughs> business to get into. Yeah, and I think, I think the big thing is always being able to see where the gap is, you know, and yeah. being able to convert it uh, to make money. Um, weirdly enough, I studied law, uh, uh, politics, and economics, which okay. is strange that I ended up yeah, yeah yeah so um i guess most black parents most uh, uh don't understand creativity you know Absolutely. and they, they always have an example of why it won't work out why it's not stable and stuff like that because mm, mm, mm. um because i talked a lot they were like and i got uh, a fairly good marks they're like you are going to be a lawyer and <laughs> and because i want <laughs> i wanted to go uh, to UCT, so I, I studied. I studied law there, but throughout marketing and advertising has always been part of my journey. You know, um, whether I'm doing events, whether I'm selling stuff, whether I'm conceptualizing. So mm -hmm. ideas have been very central. But for me to stay in Cape Town, I had to pass law. So that was the trade-off because yeah. then, <laughs> you know, um, when my when my law degree when I finished. Um, then I was making enough money to s start pursuing the things that I want and uh, went to a school called Red yeah. and Yellow um, and, start, and, and that's how I got into marketing. So I guess, I guess that's the yeah. uh, abbreviated uh, uh, journey of my life right, uh, so far. Yeah, so you finished your law degree, then you yeah. went to Red and yeah. Yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you never practiced... I just gave on graduation. I came and I gave my mom and I said, here's your degree. Now, now it's time for me to do what I want, you know? Um, sure. Look, st studying law and economics and politics has, has really helped me because um, 
uh, as a business person, you need to understand a lot of a lot of things that are beyond what you do on a day to day. So yeah, um, I didn't practice because by by the time I finished, I was literally sick and tired. You know, when you studying something that you don't really like, like yeah, uh, and 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 and. Because the way I'm raised is to finish stuff, you know, man. Oh, yeah, uh, like, but to finish. <laughs> should know, yeah, I should know good. Like, like, if food, <laughs> like in my household, you had to finish it, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so that's, that's, the, that's the school I come from. Look, uh, it's aided in my journey. Um, it, it, it's helped me along. Um, but, yeah, ideas have been just central in my life. I mean, uh, you, you say you follow me uh, at Tenduna on Twitter. Yeah. Um, and and that and that's it, you know. I've been selling ideas. I've been that kid that is always about, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't yeah. we do this differently? So uh, it's been a journey. And when I look back, it's all I've been. I mean, we confine it now to creativity, but yeah. it's all been about ideas, and that's what it's been about, you know. Yeah. So do you remember your first job when you left uh, Red and Yellow? So you, you qualified, you got your, uh, another qualification at Red and Yellow. Yeah. So where to now? Yeah. So here, here's something interesting. I've only worked for eight months for another person in my whole life. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I've only gone to one job interview. Yeah. I've, I've, never, I've never gone to. And this is why I went there. It wasn't a job. I wanted to learn how agencies work. Oh. Right. That, that's 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 the reason why I always knew I didn't want to work for anyone. Um, and there was this agency, uh, Island Davenport. Um, yeah. That had BM, BMW. They had um, uh, Apple computers. They had Investec. Sure. Um, and 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 it, this was quite a small agency, so you could get to work on the brands. Um, mm-hmm. They came to Red and Yellow, like on that crossover. Uh, you know, come work for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was, um, I took a job there. I took a quite a junior job uh, because I wanted mm-hmm. to learn and I wanted to just be on the ground to see how this thing works. Um, after yeah. eight months, when, when I left, um, I said, no, I'm leaving. I said, no, you can't leave. I'd worked on BMW with one awards. And I said, no, I'm, I'm leaving. I want to start my own thing. And as a result, I was the youngest board member of a WPP agency in, in the world. Sure. You know, at, tw- at 25, yeah. they, said, they said, you can't leave. You, okay. have, to be, um, uh, you, have, you have to be um, a board member. Uh, you have to be a board member. You can only leave if you're a board member. So I, I, took, yeah. I took the board position. And that's, that's really what and, and how everything came about. Mm. So were there any perks that came with the board membership? Yeah, look, I, 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 I think the biggest perk in life is having an opportunity to learn. Um, mm. I'm not entirely driven by money or material, but mm-hmm. I believe the biggest things that you can get is knowledge, you know? Sure. Um, I got to sit uh, 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 on a board with Umam Nununchingila. I got to Whoa. sit on the board um, uh, uh, with very, very senior, seasoned international business people. And I mean, at 25, yeah. uh, on the board there was also Mam Wendy Luhabe. Luhabe, yeah. You know, That's so legendary. Being, yeah, so just being a 25 year old, um, uh, uh, that gets that level of. Um, exposure to business from people that have been in business for years. I think yeah. it really, really grew me. And a lot of the lessons that when um, we started Avatar, I applied were from those lessons mm-hmm. in those boards, you know, um, sure. the type of accounting systems, the type of uh, reporting. Um, the first thing that we uh, 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 invested in was the most mm-hmm. expensive software. So if anyone runs an agency, and you yeah. don't have this software. You're kind of not running an agency. It's called Chase. And Chase, everyone I in, know Chase. Yeah. We couldn't yeah. afford Chase when we started, but that's the first thing because I understood from those board meetings that Chase is central to reporting. Chase is central yeah. to managing an agency. And, and that, that's, that's, that was the biggest perk, being around 
legendary business people uh, yeah. of both local and international stat- I mean, at the time, Mam Nunchingila sat on the international board of Ogilvy and WPP. So those mm. lessons uh, I, st- I still use today, you know. Sure. So now, what was your first business? You, you, you left the agency to start your own thing. What, was Avatar your first business? Or you started no, something no. before? I've lost count of how many businesses I've started and how many sure. businesses have failed. I think yeah. a lot of people see Avatar because it's the one that got through. That's you standing. I, That's standing yeah, across, so, across the M1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I, I started my first business probably at like the age of 11. Sure. You know, um, I started my first business... I made a lot of money uh, at the age of 18 where I had this company called uh, uh, Kinsani Safaris, which when, when I look back was like the original Airbnb. So how it worked um, is that we would go to households and build mm-hmm. an extra hut. And then we had, a, we had a booking system and then you could book. So where we opened it uh, was a place near Coxstad that had distinct cultures of Zulu, Tosa, and Sutu because of where the region is. So yeah, you, yeah. Could book in, you could book into a, a Sutu a household, you could book into a Tosa household, and then you lived like them, you ate what they ate, and then we had a profit share scheme with the family there. So if it was 300 rand a night, the family would take 150, I would take 150. So it's like the original cultural uh, Airbnb. B, yeah, yeah, yeah. Auto- yeah, it got bought over by a German um, uh, a travel company, and I made I made I made quite a bit. Well, what, what I thought was a lot then. Wow. Um, and 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 I've been just setting up at at 21. I opened a nightclub um, in Cape Town called Pata Pata Lounge, which yeah. was just the best. You know, we were we were <laughs> we were killing it. You know, we were the only yeah. we were the only club that catered for black people in the CBD, you know, because mm. you know how Cape Town is set up. So I managed yeah. to get a liquor license from a, a Jewish friend of mine and we're trading under him. So I've started lots of businesses, yeah. a lot of failed, um, but it's all been lessons uh, for, what, for what now I do, which is, which is Avatar, yeah. Yeah, cool. So get into today's topic, um, using creativity to solve business problems. So just to kick yeah. it off, can, creativity solve business problems like you rightfully said earlier your parents what were not approving of you wanting to pursue anything in the creative field that's why you did law yeah. so that you can get that qualification and say hey okay can i do what i want so the general yeah. perception is ar- around creativity it's a it's a bit of a negative one you, you know what i mean yeah but yeah can creativity solve business problems in, in, you know, the, the word creativity, I always find interesting because it's a constantly evolving word, right? Mm. Um, um, and, and what basically it means for me is it, it's creation. It's, it, it's yeah. to create, right? So what you're asking is, can you create yourself out of a business problem? And the answer is yes. You know, mm. you, can, you can create something that gets you out of a business problem, you know. Now, yeah. creativity in, the, in its ev- evolution means different things now, you know. It's heavily linked to technology. It's heavily linked to innovation. So mm. what essentially we are talking about is how to innovate so that you solve your business problems, you know. I think mm. uh, case in point, the... the, the the um, situation that we find ourselves in yes, uh, with yes. COVID, the only way uh, we can uh, get over this and the businesses that survive are the ones that create situations through creativity that gets them out of the situation. And mm. what have we learned? Technology and being, um, uh, 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 you know, having the agility to change direction very fast, which is what creativity is, uh, yeah. innovating. This, what we're doing now, it's a, solving a business problem, it's solving Absolutely. a platform problem, but yeah. it's creativity. And because creativity is linked to innovation and technology, it is actually one of the few tools 
that can solve uh, business problems accurately. You know. Sure. Do you have any like classic examples? Yes, you gave this platform. For example, I used to host the dialogues at Simon Hong Precinct in Bramfontein. I'll have people yeah. in the room and I'll have guys like you coming in as storytellers and they'll do the talking. So COVID-19 yeah. happened. Um, they started betting what 50 and above, uh, crowds of 50 and above. They're like, you can't yeah. do And I was like, yeah. damn. Then lockdown happened. I'm like, I can't afford to stay put, you know, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and do nothing. Then, then I was like, okay, Zoom, here's a platform there. It's free. Instagram is there. So how about I link up with the, um, with the storytellers and let's do it. And fortunately, people are also open to the idea. And that's how it's now happening online. In, in, in your case, um, do you have any like a, a case study of like a business um, um, example? They're, they're, that, they're, they're everywhere. They're, they are yeah. everywhere. I will just pick one from the top of my head. Uber. You yeah. know? Uh, the business problem of, uh, in America, few taxis, uh, few yellow cabs that can actually take people around. Um, yeah. Uber was the solution for transport, you know, mm -hmm. using yeah. technology and creativity. Um, uh, now there's Uber Eats. You want food to come to you. Before you had to phone so many yeah. people. And just by <laughs> getting... You know, like I remember yeah. the only really reliable um, uh, 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 delivery mechanism was like pizza, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> when you thought of food coming to your house, you think pizza, you know? You thought now, of the box, yeah. Yeah, you know, yesterday I ordered Mukhodu of, 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 of Uber Eats because yeah. that is the business problem of not having variety. When you think of deliveries that are coming into your home, you think of pizza because they've kind of clocked it. Um, so Uber Eats, um, Airbnb, you know, yeah. the solution is I don't necessarily want to sleep in a hotel. I want something yeah. homely and affordable. Comes in an app using technology sure. and creativity to say, hey, that spare bedroom in my house, I can, you know, put a little wallpaper, zhuzh it up a bit, and Make that's a plus. money. So, yeah. That's it. So it is everywhere. And, and especially um, now the tech businesses. I mean, you look at the growth of tech businesses. You look at um, uh, 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 even just the top 10 richest people. Uh, yeah. Most of them are in tech. You look at Bezos, yeah. he's in tech. He, Absolutely. Like, he runs the website, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Amazon, you know, a clarified you know, website. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, you look at uh, China, you look at Alibaba, Alibaba what is that? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's, Jack Ma runs a website, you know, <laughs> but because he's used creativity, he is the richest man. So the yeah. richest man in the two biggest economies, America yeah. and, and, and China, yeah. run websites. <laughs> that's sure. what they do. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and that's innovation and that's creativity. But that Creativity solves a need, and I want to emphasize this, you know, and, 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 and anything that solves a need is creativity, mm. and all businesses should solve a need. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you, I'm not sure if you're watching the news yesterday or listened to oh, oh, the so, news. Oh, so sorry. Sorry, someone asked me which tech company uh, can you yeah. make a reference of. I can make lots. Um, Yoko. Uh, Yoko started by uh, Mapai. Um, Yoko is changing the game when it comes to payment systems for more yeah. business. A simple company like Sweep South. Sweep South has managed to raise over 50 million rand in funding just sure. for taking something that we know, cleaning. It, it <laughs> sounds simple. You, yeah. know, you want to clean your house, where do you go? Sweep South, that is a big tech company in, in South Africa that is changing the game. Yoko, the story of Yoko, and I urge everyone to go look at the story of Yoko. It is incredible, you know. Yeah. Not because they're a client of mine. Uh, I'm not biased. But oh, they are, are they? A client, <laughs> uh, 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 but mm. I fell in love with the story of how they are changing uh, 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 using technology. Um, yeah. Bigger companies, if, if you look at the history of BCX, Business Connection, yeah. it is a solutions company. It got bought over by Telcom. 
it started yeah. off as a company that just solves problems and there's, there's lots of it everywhere yeah yeah actually still on on that example uh yesterday exclusive books and uber east partnership you know now you can order your book Go. on an app it, it, you know that's the some of the classic examples locally that are happening here and repurposing of technologies that are already um existing it's incre- it's incredible i mean um uh i i i ordered uh, and it's a it's a sorry um so i just have to charge this thing yeah um so i ordered the first groceries after lockdown i ordered from a company called zulzi oh zulzi yeah 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 company. And which and is owned by a black again, brother as well. It's owned by a black brother from Repombo. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and 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 um, there's lots of examples. And and this is where creativity and technology leading to an innovation is such a beautiful mix. And we yeah. are at a time where technology solves problems and. The creative industry, I, I usually say the, the advertising industry is, is, is dying if it thinks that it's only about making TV ads and radio ads. We are now more in the tech space than we actually even are in uh, advertising. We are in solutions, solving problems, using whatever creativity that is, yeah? You know what's interesting? Back in 2010, when I was doing my first year um, at UJ, I was studying IT management. So I was in like yeah. IT. And at the time, there was a textbook, uh, we were being taught about Web 2.0. That's when things like social media were starting to take shape. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was a debate of whether IT should fall under, I mean, social media should fall under IT or marketing. You know, what I mean? yeah. so it wasn't a clear cut as it is today that it falls under um, marketing. And if you think about it, yeah. like you rightfully said now, that uh, the advertising industry is more sort of, inclined in or uh, aligned to tech than it is about just producing ads and whatnot so where do those that's ads it. live you know we need to that's start it. now creating content that lives on different platforms and and and, and stuff like that so that's someone it. actually asked um on 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 or actually i want to ask you a question around this thing of blackness because you, you say a lot you say black people must be excellent and the reason why I, I presume your agency get chosen. It's not because of its black own, but it's because you can deliver quality. What's what's your take on on this race thing and transformation, and particularly in the industry? You know, because it's it's been talked about for a very long time. What's your stance on that? Well, it's, it's transformation is very important because um, our history makes us start at different levels. So it's yeah. like running a marathon, you know. Uh, some people, they say we're running from here to uh, 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 Pretoria, yeah. you know. Some people, because of laws of history and the way the country was set up, are already in Centurion, right? Sure. Now, you can't, you can't expect the people that are starting off on the starting line, because, yeah. not because of their own abilities, because they've been held back by the system, to say, okay, guys, let's all run and let's see who gets to Pretoria to, uh, first. Yeah. It can't be that. The people in the starting line need to be given uh, a proper uh, advantage, you know, so that they catch up mm. with the people that have had previous advantage. So transformation is at the heart of what is going to save our society because inequality, as, as we've even seen, is, is the reason why this country would be unstable. We can't have a situation where we have a lot of people that have something and a lot mm-hmm. of people that are now living on welfare and, and don't have anything. And that's through no fault of their own is because there were apartheid laws that held yeah. them back. Um, sure. And those laws are not, even when they're over, the legacy of those laws are still there in our education yeah. system, in where we wake up, in our access to opportunities, the structural um, uh, 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 divide that was created by apartheid needs a leveling field. So yeah. it is extremely important. And we can't 
talk about it enough, you know, until yeah. there's change, until there's change, no one can say they're tired of hearing about transformation. <laughs> if we are still, you know, if we are still working towards it, we must yeah. achieve it, you know, and we yeah. must be, we must be even more radical in achieving transformation because it is immorally correct to have people that were helped by a system to carry on benefiting when the people mm. that were oppressed using laws uh, yeah. don't. So um, uh, 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 transformation is at the heart uh, uh, at what I do. What I don't like being used is just mm. blackness for blackness sake, you know, as a crutch okay. to say, you know, yeah. help me out because I'm black, because that makes you lesser than, you know, even, mm. even when people, it's, it's like now a, a common narrative when they say, um, you know, Avatar is the biggest black owned agency. And I'm yeah. like, no, we post that. We want damn black <laughs> agency in the whole industry. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't put me in a black box because I'm not there. I'm just a damn good agency. Good agency. You take my yeah. agency, you put it in New York, you take my agency, you put it in London, it should be a damn good agency. So even ourselves, you know, we don't need to mm. hide in the corner of, yeah. hey, I'm the first black, oh, I'm the business, biggest black. The world doesn't operate like that. The world operates on excellence and you must just be damn good. And that's what we've set out to do. And that's what we always obsessed in achieving. You know? Great. Um, you also sit on the board of uh, Red and Yellow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, advisory board uh, for, for, for Red and Yellow. What do you think is the role of, of education, particularly in the sector whereby a lot of people just come in um, with their engineering degrees and say, hey, I'm a marketer because I can post a few things online and make them trend or whatever, I'm a marketer. Yeah. I mean, you studied law first and you got a degree, then you went on to Red and Yellow to study this thing called marketing. What do you think it's, it's, um, it's the role of education in the industry? So the role of education is everything. So I also sit on the IEB Transformation Council, right? Yeah, yeah. And the first thing that I, the first thing that I said to them is I linked red and yellow and, 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 and IEB and, 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 and said, for the people that we want to transform, they need to be educated. You know, that's first and foremost, give them the tools because we've also seen the wrong side of transformation where people get given responsibilities that they're not up to. And obviously that's going to set you up for failure, you know. So you need to make yeah. sure that the people that you put in these positions are equipped and they can do the job. And if you're a student, yeah. you need to know that I know because we need, as black people, we need to be even better than the rest because everything is always questioned. So education mm. is a structured way to make sure that we are equipped so that's why um i've sat on the uh, red and yellow board for, for yeah. three years now um yeah. and 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 for me giving away bursaries is key because once mm -hmm. someone has got an education then they've got a tool for life that no one can take on the people that think marketing is easy they think that you can just, you know, come in wing and it. do something, wing it. Are the people yeah. that get exposed? You know, they don't last. We won't see them um, mm. um, in a few years, you know. But if you look at the people that have lasted in marketing, are the people that have taken time to study. Now, studying yeah. is not only getting a degree or a diploma, but that have got interests that read, that create, that have got an opinion beyond just, yeah. you know, what they think, you know, because... The unfortunate thing with marketing is that it seems easy. You know, it's very, <laughs> it looks from the outside, yeah. it looks like it's an easy thing to do. But yeah. the more deeper and more sophisticated you go, you realize that it's actually not as easy as what you thought. And, mm. and people that think it's easy usually get found out quite quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, people start marketing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's because it's such a beautiful thing because it's based on human insight. But then yeah. the difference is being able to mine that human insight into a long-term strategy. Now, anyone can probably try and add. Some people can probably fluke and add. But yeah. running, being in this industry is being able to do it over and over again because everyone has got ideas. Right? Absolutely. But yeah. can you have those ideas 
consecutively for the next 10 years. That is what differentiates me from someone that just has a good idea. Absolutely. I just want to ask you a, a question uh, around the chartered marketer title. Um, I know like the old school marketers, you know, that's what sort of they, most of them pride themselves in. Is it something that's really still worth having or what pursue for someone like me who's new you wish in the game or a youngster who's like okay why not climb the rank is it something that people can still pursue in your view well i hope i don't i hope i hope i don't discourage anyone or discredit anyone i've never really understood or believed in that term you know because yeah. it's borrowed from chartered accountancy <laughs> so for yeah. me, it, 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 it it gains its credibility to say if I call myself a marketer or an ad mm. man or someone in advertising mm. is not good enough, I have to almost say I'm a marketing engineer or a marketing doctor to find yeah, yeah, yeah. seriousness in what I do. So look, I, I don't know enough about it, but I've always believed that mm. we are creatives, whether we are chartered creatives, whether <laughs> we are super creatives, whether yeah. we are chief creatives, at the end of the day, we create. And that's what yeah. should be important. I think titles are, are good for some, but for me, as long as you've got a product that is creative, that your yeah. work, you know, like, it's like, it's like, it's like being a music, musician, right? Yeah. You know, whether you're a chartered musician or whether you're a musician in diversity mm. or good record, C's or, C's or music. Yeah. So yeah. You, you can yeah. be whatever you call yourself. But when I give you a guitar, what, what, what do I hear? Do I hear great music or do I hear chattered music? Because the output is creativity. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you can create, let mm. the workshop, I, we, will, we will tell you that you we score as a marketing or you're a marketing guru. Or, yeah. But Oksana, you're a creative. Let's see what you've created. So besides calling yourself names and titles, let's mm -hmm. see your work. You know, let the work speak to what speak you are. You. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we've got a question on Instagram, guys. If you have any questions, please start typing them up. Um, uh, then Duna is still with us, so he'll be happy to answer some of your questions. So there's someone here, Ashley, or Ash, can, Ash underscore Gandao, saying, where do we draw the line between wanting to just help for being black or needing help to offset the disadvantages and uh, disadvantages created by historic injustices. We, we, we help, sorry, I missed that. Help uh, the difference so between what, just help. So, where do we draw the line between needing help, like generally, and maybe a handout? Sort of. So, so for for me, for me, it's a simple thing. When you can, when you can start helping others, you are empowered. Right. Okay. So, so when I started employing people, I knew that I, I, was, I was empowered and I needed to empower others. So when you start feeling the need of, I need to help, I need to mentor, that should be the gap because you also shouldn't stay in the, I need help or I need assistance for too long. But as soon as your, your company can start employing people, um, mm -hmm. you have reached a certain point of empowerment. It might not be full empowerment, but you're definitely yeah. on, a, on a longer journey. So the, 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 the trick is always to try to get less and less help as you grow, because that's where you see that you've grown, you know? Yeah. And that's why skilling so, yourself is so important. Great. Um, there's another question here. Uh, this is Ipo from Zoom. I mean, on Zoom, uh, she's asking, what would you say are the key ingredients for maintaining longevity in the advertising industry? Oh yeah, man. Just, just being, just being straight, man. You know, being straight, mm. being authentic. I, I think a lot of people want to model themselves on someone else. I always discourage people when they say, um, you know, I want to be just like Avatar or I just want to be like UNZ. I'm like, no, you, you are yeah. cheating yourself, you know, because trying to build an avatar or trying to be a value as Z is not your authentic self. So mm -hmm. I think authenticity becomes, you know, 
you know don't be like yeah. the next person don't aspire look you can be inspired but don't always want to be don't you know um so i think authenticity is 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 the big thing um skilling yourself um uh, uh, constantly sharpening your talents and yeah. um i love i love the 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 quote and i think maybe i can summarize the question in that quote is a steve jobs quote that says stay hungry stay foolish yeah you know because creativity is all about curiosity it's all about wanting to learn and the minute you think we pause or you itabula or you enjoy game that's when you start dying so if you want longevity is to stay mm-hmm. humble stay learning and really be a student for most of your life you won't go wrong with being authentic your authentic self yeah so be your authentic self i think that's that that's really key and also i like the yeah. point of um this if there's one thing i remember from uh from my masters is uh, a land a concept called uh, kaizen you know yeah. which speaks to uh, continuous improvement and which is what uh, a great brand like toyota um uh company motor company they use in their company to continuously better themselves and produce better cars and better uh, selling cars so yeah. there's a question yeah. here from uh, so, so, sorry I'm, i'm watching something so i read a lot and i i watch a lot of things yeah. so if you want to see longevity and how you gain success i'm watching mm. the last dance on netflix uh, the michael jordan story okay how that how that man reacts to challenges how that man res- like he's talented but he's still the one that practices more than anyone on the field you know so it's sure. not some like i am i am michael jordan or avelin ninja you know so you cold. always need to be yeah you always need to be better than your last game and that's why mm. humility plays such a crucial role in sustaining you know you can't i can't say i know i have a tie you know i always need to be humble to that i'm a student of the game and i need to carry on learning and carry on pushing myself yeah yeah Okay cool uh great answer there's another question from party uh for uh party fortune what are your thoughts on the relationship between advertising and fine art look i i think i think advertising music poetry fine art is all under creativity i think So I'm I'm consciously breaking that silo on on Sunday I've got uh, Uladuma from Matosa on one of the things that I do on Sundays because yeah, yeah, yeah. I also want to break the silo that advertising is for advertisers so mm. I want to gauge an industry where a, an idea can come from a musician it can come from a fashion designer um sure. we've worked a lot on the copywriting space with comedians You know, they comedians comedians write the best copy because they observers of society so mm-hmm. for me there shouldn't be any difference between fine arts it's all under creativity it just needs to be uh, channeled into a, a commercially understood phenomena for client because the way yeah. the industry has been divided is like no advertising ideas come from advertisers and i i don't necessarily think that's the case um as yeah. i say we work comedians we've worked with jazz artists we've worked with fashion designers so for me creativity should come from everywhere great answer again you really dropping gems uh, then doing a- killing it i'm killing it i'm <laughs> killing it son um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a question from dope underscore encounters uh what is the di- okay the difference between a bad idea and an idea that is not ready to be reserved yet so so i i don't think i don't think there's a difference between a bad idea um i think they are ideas that um haven't haven't been given enough time mm-hmm. to to simmer i think they are ideas that haven't been researched enough i think yeah. they are ideas that are not aligned to the times or are not feasible but if you a lot of people don't know that creativity is not so when you get the idea it's only just the beginning you know and a lot of people stop there you know they're like oh i've got a great idea whenever i yeah. get a, a a great idea that's when the work starts that's when i'm researching that's when i'm reading 
That's what I'm mm-hmm. really investigating. So a well-researched, and that's why strategy becomes so important. So a well-researched, well-thought-out idea can be refined yeah. to being a good idea. But the bad ideas are the ideas that you think, yo, I've got a great idea, and then you go and execute. Because mm-hmm. then you start discovering problems in that idea yeah. as you execute. And that's where it falls apart. But for me, I must think of the idea now. I must think of the idea next year. I must think of the idea in five years. I must think of the idea backwards. I must interrogate. I must unpack. I must, I must be the, the guy that says, what, what, what is missing in this idea? Even if I think it's great. I think a lot of people think I've got a great idea and it ends there. And that can't be. Oh, so you need to refine it, constantly work on it, research, you need to research. research. It's like a bonsai, you know, you, you, you are, we are trimming it, this thing. You know, the way we refine ideas, when we go to pitch, I've never yeah. gone into a pitch not still, like, fixing the idea, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Till the last hour, I'm still like, I'm man. No, let's just, I see it's going on. So yeah. an idea is like that. You, you, you raise an idea. You don't, you don't just give birth to an idea and, and hope for the best. We have to, mm. we have to mold it. We have to teach it. You know, yeah. it has to teach you. You have to constantly. And I'm never satisfied, even with the ideas that win awards for us. I've always yeah. got something. With, you know, if we just, you know, and that's what makes the quest for curiosity and wanting to perfect your ideas. I think a lot of people have ideas and they end there. But I've got a great idea. But for me, that's mm. only when the work starts. It starts with a good idea, but there's so much work after that. Yeah. Awesome. I think we've got a very important question here. This one I also yeah. I can relate so much to it. Um, asked by yeah. Hazel Nuts uh, 91. Does Duna remember how he got his first, I presume, big client and how much effort that took to get the, the retainer with no history of work to back him or was it based on connections or network? So it wasn't. So I, I, I'm still not connected and I'm still not networked. <laughs> I, 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 I'm very shy, you know. Um, yeah. So we did, we did, um, we did the, the, the ANC elections uh, with um, uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, Grow South Africa, right? Yeah. And every time I met him, I never thought to network or anything. It was just about a job. You know, when we were shooting ads with them, we came in, yeah. we shot, we went. So I, yeah. I believe for me, the quality of work always, always does that for you. Um, I, I'll be very honest. I, when, I was very lucky because I, when, I, when I worked for that eight months, I won an international award for BMW, which was a big deal, you know? Yeah. So I already, when, when I was selling myself, so my first big client was um, Fox and National Geographic, you know? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fox so, News got Trump. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so what we did, what we did is that, and quite a, weirdly so, we didn't go for small clients from the beginning. Wow. You know, we went only for the big clients. It's a weird philosophy, but we went yeah. because I, I believe servicing a small client is the same dynamic. It's probably sometimes more work than a big client. Absolutely. Because, and you get paid you know, less. And you get paid less and there's just stresses. So we went out uh, and pitched on Fox and Nat Geo. And we only had three people, you know, but they could feel the hunger and they could feel the idea. And because we believed in our idea so much, mm. you know, they, 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 they bought into us. Um, Kuto is asking, when looking for a marketing agency, what are the things uh, one should look out for or should look for? Um, well, look at their clients, look at their work, look at their style of work, because each agency has got a different style of working, yeah. the types of work. So work they've done in the past is good. If they don't have much work, the type of thinking about your brand. So give them a brief, give them a problem and say, hey, mm. um, this is what I want to do. What would you do? Okay. Because then you can test out the expertise. You can test out how they do stuff. So um, it's all about testing. Because what we sell is thinking. Yeah. So when you're looking for an agency, you are looking for people that can think with you. Yeah. So you need to make sure that your thinking 
you can think together because an agency is not just a supplier, it's a partner to take your brand forward. Yeah. So give them a project to say, you know, I've got this, uh, you know, Nokia. How do I take Nokia into the future? Yeah. You know, hey, I'm giving all my clients a plug here. Nokia, <laughs> Yeah. Solving your problem. Thank you once again for tuning into the Pets and Brands Dialogues. Uh, before I leave, as always, I'm going to leave you with this hit song. Hit song. Pet, 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 pet. Hey. It's Pet on Brands. Watch how you branded, man. A pet on the back is a pet from the man. Better be branded, man. A pet from the pet is a pet on the brand. If it's enormous, flawless, gorgeous, don't be cautious, cautious.